Okay. Is that the right location? Yeah. Right. Is the owl in the right spot? Sure. Uh, it's pretty close to me. Where'd Ashley go? Right there. Oh. Did you take close. your chair with her? Or? Oh. All right. We're on. Are you ready? We're on, Ashley. Okay. She's still new. <laughs> Legislative priorities. All right. She can hear you. <laughs> All right, absolutely can hear you. Go on in, close the door. Um, That's a legislative coffee. That's a All right. priority right there. So the big two things that I'm going to ask council that would hope that you two would, or you two, that you would support on these two items would be for the centrifuge and the one-way couplets slash alleyway slash parking lot, which is for the um, activated alleyway that was in the budget um, for 1.56, 1,563,000 for the activated alleyway um, costs, associated costs. It, oh, Jerry. Hi, everybody. Talking Hi. about legislative ass, uh, legislative agenda this year. Okay. And the other one for the centrifuge would be for their, um, the water reclamation project. Uh, and that'll be for 428,600. Both of those projects are fully funded through the budget and through other um, different monies that we already have. Loans, correct, in the center field. Or, center field is our one. That's our yeah. all our money. And so and so is the um, Act of Alley, that's right. all our money. It's so, hello. <laughs> and uh, so we're sure. over in. No, I just can't. So, no, I just can't. No, scroll this way. Yeah, go on. Keep rolling. Keep rolling, rolling, oh. rolling. What? The Keep rolling, rolling, rolling. Nothing. Ah, oh, let this get nothing. All right, anyway. No, I, I got there. you. I'm, I'm tracking. So anyway, the centrifuge for 420,600 in one way, alleyway slash parking lot for 1.51. Those are what um, I would like to propose to the council for, for you to, um, I know we don't have to have an official approval on this, but um, I, I want support and we won't do it otherwise. Would we ask us? Go ahead. Yeah. You were first. Go ahead. <laughs> I want to know what the detail, what the alleyway, what needs to be done. Tony, do you want to talk about specifically what we want it to be for? Sorry. Yeah, so the one-way couplets. The one-way couplets and the activated alleyway and the street are all, or the parking lot are all one project. The activated alleyway is installing lights. Um, Centigrading the road a little bit, putting some parking at the very end, um, installing outlets on the lights for food trucks, vendors, whatever. And that that's mainly the alleyway. I can have it right. Very minimal yeah. compared to the other two. So one-way couplets are sidewalks, depending on the sidewalks both way down, um, putting the sidewalk on the side where the museum is, putting in lights, 220 plugs for food trucks, um, and then creating uh, angled parking down the entire one way of those steep one of the streets. And the parking lot right here, as we've talked about, it is a quite a you know, large parking lot, 100 ish spaces, uh, paved with a uh, stormwater system installed. Is it this street and the next one up? You're talking about going one way? Yeah, this street right here, and then one right across Washington and McKenzie. And now it's a PD. Yeah, out where I am. So, yeah, right up here is the next one. So, Washington be a one way going this way, McKenzie be a one way going this way. And all of those projects add up to about 1.5 million. Yeah. Um, yeah. Some change. The other project, Centrifuge, you want to talk about that? So what it does? What yeah, so it? as you may or may not know, in the last uh, budget cycle from the state, we got money for the bio dryer, which is the thing that actually dries the solids in terms of the fertilizer. The centrifuge is what spins up before it gets to the bio dryer and you know gets the initial set of liquid out and then pumps everything to the bio dryer. So it's just one more piece we can get a little cheaper from the federal government. We already budgeted for it. We're going to pay for it. But any money we can get back is money that our utility and rate payers don't have to pay. And that could further let down the line, allow us to lower rates or do something else with it. So it just helps subsidize our costs by getting some money from the state government. So if we were to get that, is that lowering the amount of the loan we're using? No, this one's straight out of our budget. So the loan is uh, that $33 million. And this is low, So we're paying the same fund, though. So the loan we're paying back from the sewer fund, this is directly from the sewer fund. This is five million we've saved up to build the bio dryer solid section. So if we get that money, is is that money we're not going to take from the loan, or are we just going to take that money and pay it directly to the loan? 
So there's two things you can do. So um, if we don't, it'll be money we're not spending from the enterprise fund that we thought we were going to spend. So it's 500-ish thousand dollars we wouldn't have to spend on this. That could be applied to the loan to lower our loan payments, or it could be done to subsidize rates at a later time or offset projects in the future or something else. So I mean, honestly, if, if that's what we're going to get state money for, then in my opinion, it should go straight to paying the loan off. Yeah, I mean, that's one way of looking at it. Um, I think that's good. I, I think that'll help us lower water rates in the future because um, that money, like Cody's saying, is going towards that stuff, um, going towards paying off that loan. So that would could, could and would be applied for that. Um, other, other ways to look at it is this is all our money that we're spending here for the city. Um, we, we, like Cody said, we have a loan. We have, we have a budget. We budget for both of these projects. But that's just money, especially if we do it for the, um, not the centrifuge. Is the other project, the other projects are enterprise funds, correct? Which one? The, um, the activate dollar right? It's street fund, which they're not an enterprise fund, but they're still a fund that if we have to subsidize with general fund money and the gas tax. Sure. So knowing that we could um, pay for other projects. Um, I mean, that's a lot of money in our, you know, we probably won't get all of that. We'll ask for all of it. But if, I mean, that's a $2 million ask almost. Um, I, I think we probably, again, this is just me thinking, uh, from my experience, probably between 700 and 1.3 million, somewhere around there is what realistically I think we could get from the legislature this year. Um, maybe higher, maybe lower, but um, we should be able to get some money for these. These are all projects that are already um, budgeted for, they're already planned for, and they're shovel ready, which is what the legislature likes. Um, open to other ideas too, if council has any other ideas on projects. Um, given that we're getting money from, this is all in the capital budget, um, but there are also opportunities if you think for um, transportation budget, we could get money for that as well for existing projects that we have. What did we ask for last year and didn't get? We didn't, um, I don't, well, we asked for 50,000 for the dog park and we got that. That was our only ask, um, kind of, so, we were teeing them up for this year because this is a big year, um, big biennial budget. Last year we got something small, which was great. It's, it's big impact for us. Fifty thousand, fifty thousand off to spend locally, but um, this will be our big ask, and hopefully, like you know, like Cody saying or um, James saying, this will lower our um, hopefully the water rates in the future. If we're talking about road budgets, why don't we put something to this number C? Algiers Drive closure road purchase. Well, Dr. Bellin. Don't think that would apply for it. One, well, that won't work. Well, not at this point. It's one, because it's, yeah, one, it's not our property. Two, there's no oh, yeah. plans for Can't it. Use um, it for purchase. Can't use the money for purchase. No, not for the capital okay. budget. I mean, you could do capital, there's, but you, we have to have a, like a plan and everything and set um, before we ask for money at the legislature where okay. they would authorize it. Okay. But those, I mean, there's other st street projects we could ask for still. Um, we could still ask for uh, what's the connection to the um, to your road, road, that upgrade, you know, is that fully funded yet through um, our other um, grant money? The design is fully funded for GRDC. But project money is, or actual construction is not? Not, yeah, and most time, like you said, it's not shell ready because we haven't started the design yet, but we have the money for the design of that, which is good. Okay, so we could ask for design money, but not, this one's already funded. We could ask for design money for a different project that's already on our six year, um, or our, um, I think it has to be our six year Cody. Has to be our six year plan. Yeah, it has to be your six year transportation improvement plan. Yeah, yeah Brian, right. Brian had it. Um, <laughs> is the <laughs> southern loop My side part of the southern loop? Here, here. So the, <laughs> the what I'm asking is, are they already planned? That we have a thing that now we just need to start putting together a shovel ready, and then is the rest of it? Because that might be another one where you can consider getting a grant, uh, asking for grant money to try to get the um, plan put together so it's, we can have a complete plan for the whole thing. Yeah, um, so the southern, the part of the southern loop are on there, not the entire thing. So the Tone Boulevard extension, the uh, Mosman or 93rd extensions on there, the Mill Road to 92nd, I think is on there. Um, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. There's a couple other parts of the southern loop, not the entire thing is on there. If that is something you could, yes. I think that might be something worthwhile to get a grant money for to get that put together as a plan so we can start looking at trying to complete the southern loop to try to get another third of the traffic out of Young. And now we can have the central business district even more, which will help a lot. I think 
it's just something I think we need to try to look at doing because you had the federal government that passed the infrastructure plan. This is a for Southern Thurston County, Yelm being one of the largest, uh, one of the fastest growing elements of Thurston County. We need some help on getting our the road infrastructure put together so that we can get the bypasses done. Well, I mean, 510, that's state, but the Southern Loop will be one that we can do and then turn to developers and say, hey, you know, reimburse a certain portion back and we can finally start getting some of the traffic alleviation done. So Cody, are there any projects you can think of um, that would add to that Southern Loop that are shovel ready or? None are shovel ready to do our design work, but there's some that pencil really well and like Road and Road was one. Um, and that's why it got funded by TRPC. Are any of those for the Southern Bypass so we're, um, ready for like design, design money? The only one that I would say would be ready for design that could be done relatively quickly with a no road connection and possibly the Bald Hills to Walmart Boulevard. Um, the issue with that one is the property acquisition is going to be very hard with the Melrose, the, sorry, the Bald Hills Road to Walmart Boulevard. Are there other traffic um, traffic projects that you think would be ready for planning or uh, construction? I think Wilkinson would be your next big one. Um, the Wilkinson Rebuild Railway is another one that we've been looking at. Um, specifically, council members have talked about making a walkway there, so railway is one with that. Those ones would be easier to do. I know they're not part of the Southern Loop, but they pencil really well sure. and they're doing like helping people get walking lanes, bike okay. lanes, the places they need to go. All right. Well, so, well, so go ahead. The ball to the Walmart is that going to cut through the property where they're trying to put that used car lot? Yeah, yes. so part of the design of theirs has an opening where it leaves the road to go through there. So when someone comes in like that with design, we know that the road's going to go there, through there. So we make them design around it. So, like their final design, whenever they get there, um, has a road of space in the middle for a road. So have they, have, like, have they given us any kind of time work? Uh, I, we met with them about a month ago. Um, they had they had issues with getting the product done, so they're bringing in some new investors, and it looks like it might start again soon. Um, I don't know if this is probably better for the end, but so I'm sure you all are aware of their little little news thing a few months ago. There were cars with rebuilt tires without telling people. Mm -hmm. Um. Would we be able, are we able to do some kind of city ordinance or something where any car sales place, they have to clearly disclose, know, display disclose. that it's a rebuilt title vehicle? I'm not sure. We should probably talk under your initiative. So, okay, let's yeah. do that. Yeah. Okay. Anything else on legislative priorities? Um, so if y'all would be okay with the um, centrifuge and one-way couplets, um, the activity out of the way stuff, um, we can start with those two and then add additional, um, get another project in, whether it's the um, Southern Bypass or a different street project um, that we could go for in the tram station budget. Would that be something that's... Yeah. Fill my fill my sidewalks in is number three. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, whatever that project is, I, it sounds like it's in a transportation yeah, plan. These couple of projects, but yeah, we'll um we'll discuss that one a little more, and I'll have something more like for you under the mural upcoming um, no. city council meeting. <laughs> Does not. And then until that, we'll um start the next for the Elementary to downtown. <clears throat> Anything else on that? Yeah. All right, beautification so grant updates. I don't know who's doing what. Not really. I'm not here oh, here okay. because I have one thing to share for the people to come in. You need to be here, here, and then you can plug the paper. Yeah, man. You're hired. Yeah. This is pretty short and simple. Um, Before I share my screen, I just kind of want to just real quickly, I know that you guys are all aware of this, but just so that anybody watching or listening to our recording later will have an understanding of the beautification grant. Um, so the city council approved resolution 624 that established um, a young community beautification grant um, on May 24, 2022. So last year we had our first year. Um, so the grant is intended to provide community value through enhancing the aesthetic appeal. Um, in the city. 
So we had a budget of 25,000 that the council approved to award. Uh, we did receive five applications totaling $28,994. We were able to award four grants um, that totaled 14,500. So we awarded um, a mural that's facing the Yelm Tonino Trail. We were able to award a grant to paint one of the commercial buildings on Yelm Avenue. We did a neighborhood mailbox art wrap project and also a landscape garden rock beautification project um, on Yelm Avenue. Did that one ever happen? Yes. Start so the project is completed um, as far as it can be the um, due to the weather and the timing. They actually spent the entire grant amount, but they've also they spent um, their own money purchasing all of the plants. They have the planting um, and they have it in their greenhouse. So they purchased them and provided us with those receipts, but because of the weather, they're not able to get them planted. So um, they do have them, like I said, in their own greenhouse and they're taking care of them. And then as soon as the weather warms up enough, they'll get those the plants planted. But if you walk through, it does look really nice, the walkway going through there and it, you know, so it does look really good. So the committee did meet in November and reviewed the projects. We reviewed all the projects that were funded. Um, and then discuss 2023. So the amount that was approved in the, in the budget for 2023 was also 25,000 to be awarded. Um, so after that, we got through the first year when the committee met, they looked at the um, process and reviewed the, let me share my screen really quick and we'll just go over these pretty minor changes, but I just wanna review them with you and see if you have any questions. Mostly it's the date. Here. Okay, so as from what was approved, basically what we did is the, the original grant application process that you approved had specific dates on it, like Thursday, July 7th at five o'clock is when the applications were due. Well, Thursday is not always going to be July 7th. So when the committee looked at it, so we're going to accept applications during the month of February. Um, that way every year it can be consistent and the same, we'll have this posted on our website. Um, applications will be, um, they'll review the applications and they will be um, presented to the city council at the first meeting in April. Um, applications are due March 1st of each year. So we're gonna add this information to the, to the committee information or the application information, um, just that they, they open the first week in February. Applications must be submitted by the first Friday in March at 5 p.m. The beautification grant committee will meet during the first and second weeks, the weeks of March every year to review them. Committee recommendations will be presented to the council at the first meeting in April. Projects must be completed by September 30th in the year that they were awarded. And that was, that was decided so that we could, if there were projects that needed to be planted or things like that, they kind of put that deadline in September so that they would have to be done within a time that they could be planted during that year. Um, and then the request for reimbursements need to be submitted by October 15th. And that is a little bit of a quick turnaround, but two weeks, but the committee talked about it and decided that that would be the best approach because when they finish, when you finish a project, it's fresh. You've got all your receipts right there. They're handy. So it's easiest if you can just, you've got all your information, if you can gather that and get it submitted. Um, Quick question. Yes. Um, so up there it says application is due by March 1st each year. Mm -hmm. But then the following line application process opens. Applications must be submitted by the first Friday in March at 5 p.m. Which is it going to be? The first Friday in March. They open the during February. Oh, let's see, we do. Have they must be submitted. They reviewed those. No, it does have to. It does it have that. It's the first Friday in March was the decision. So that's what'll be come before you at the next meeting. Okay. It's the first so Friday I, in what I would March. say is change that, uh, that yes. line to say applications are due by the first yes. Friday of March. Yes. Great catch. The the original the original proposal was March 1st, and then right. after we further discussion, yeah. it was like the, it was decided the first Friday. So, do you really think that 30 days is enough to from beginning to submit? If you've got third party people that you want quotes and bids and architectural drawings or something from, is that enough time? It seems we're going to start promoting it this month. 
So there will be promotions going out in January they saying, hey, this is what we did this last year. This is coming open. It's the application is going to open up, yeah. you know, February 1st. So we're going to start getting those um, notices and um, if people are on the ball and they know it ahead of January. Yeah, they had all year. Um, well, it's all reimbursement too. So if they haven't got out of pocket to already have that done, this is just really a reimbursement application more than anything, right? Well, plus we got to approve the project. Right, the approval process has to go through the approval process once, and if they are approved, and then it goes before the city council. Yeah, it is open up here now too, and it, this is kind of standardizes all those um, dates. Okay, right. as long as people know. Yeah, and I think year after year, as we continue with this, and word spreads more, but I think that when the committee was talking about it, the is having those set dates every year. It opens the first of February. The application process is open. You know. Um, till that first Friday in March. We normalize those dates. And if we have, if we're consistent and keep it the same year after year, I think as it catches on, more and more people will realize. And then if they do come yeah. up with projects throughout the year, so. um, they can be ready to go and apply when it's open. It might take a few years to really kick mm -hmm. off and, you know, to get word out, but I think um, hopefully we'll get more. Mayor Pro Tem, can I request being on that committee? Awesome. I, I, I was appointed. Well, may, may I be on the committee? Um, well, the committee is already established right established. now. Yeah. But yeah. we can discuss. Um, yeah, I can reconsider that too. Who's on that? Well, no, actually, no. For wait, are we talking about the unification committee or are we talking about the 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 this, this yeah, committee? No, I think this one's mandated by the um, RCW on who's uh, who gets on that or not. It's one of the only ones we have. What? Sorry, you cannot be scared. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because it's cool. Wait, so, you know, are we talking about the beauty? I'm sorry. I'm yes. No, there's yes. no RC. Right. You, you, you should know. We're, yes. We well, can we your I'm, I'll say you about the other committee. The, uh, sorry, I, my head's somewhere else. I, I'll say the other. So you're saying there's a chance. There is a chance. <laughs> there is a chance. Yeah, we can agree with that. Yeah, I'll, uh, if there's I a the chance, committee. it would just yeah. be good for my heart to be on the committee, and I promise I won't be any trouble. You promise? I, I mean, prom promise. Uh, I promise. Uh, I'll be it, really but good. It might not be what you think it is. <laughs> oh, I'm just saying. Well, then it, I could quit. But yeah. I'd like because try. it's not. It's not about what we want. Mm -hmm. You know, it's well, not it's about what. What? It's whatever application. Yeah, it's about the application. We, don't have, we don't have input or say. I mean, but you want it. No, I don't know. <laughs> so I'm just saying, it's not maybe what you think. Yeah, I think we already discussed who was on it before, but we can relook at it. We can we take a relook at it. Who's on it? Obviously, on it. you are. I'm on it. Who <laughs> else? Um, we have the building official, yeah. uh, finance Mr. director, the mayor, Mr. myself, and the mayor pro tem. And uh, are, no, no. Okay. I, I, I think when we first know, just don't trust the logic me, okay. to have one okay. council member and yeah. mayor pro tem was on it. Um, makes sense. I mean, I, I use the mayor for in a lot of things. If I'm asking for like council thoughts or opinions on something, um, because she's appointed or elected by the council, I feel like she's a good voice for the council. She represents us. So, yeah. <laughs> so that's one of the reasons why I think okay, it's only initially for this committee. Okay. So, like I said, minor changes as we go through, there's, I'm not going to go through the whole application because you guys have already approved all of this. Mostly it's just a matter of cleaning up those dates. Um, the other thing is, as we did discuss and the committee wanted to request to make sure they submitted an application of the current area with their application that wasn't in there previously. So um, we're gonna be asking for that. And then the I believe that was all for the application process. If we get to the reimbursement request form, we've made a few changes to that one. Um, reimbursements, if reimbursements will not be processed if all items are not included, that was important because if when they're submitting their applications, when they're submitting one thing here, one thing there, it gets really time consuming for staff to track those and then follow up and you know get make sure everything so if they don't submit all of the required documents they're very clearly spelled out we're going to reject the whole package and say no you got until they send submit everything um, and then adding language 
what is proof of payment. Um, an invoice isn't really proof of payment. We need to have either the canceled check with, you know, that we can um, redact the account number and stuff, of course, or credit card receipt or something showing that that invoice was paid. And then photos of the projects. So then again, it's an understanding of you do the work first. And if you turn in your homework, you'll get the money back. Read the instructions and submit the information, <laughs> yes. So the other thing that we asked for in the reimbursement was a recap of the project that includes how it was completed, um, benefits gained by the neighborhood. And so that was a little bit confusing to some people. And so we just were adding lines in the request for reimbursement so they can write it right in that request. So it's not a separate item for them to include. Um, and really that's it just other than so if reimbursement gets rejected, they just pay for the project on their own pocket, yeah? Well, as they long as they have everything in by... Yeah, by they've their, already done. As long as they turn in all their documents. And they did what they say they were going to do. Yeah. But yeah. Kind of know what you're getting involved in. It's not money mm -hmm. first. It's project first and then money. So, John. I'll say I was working in summer this week and saw their mural, and it sucked compared to you. <laughs> I'm like, that's lame. Ours is way better. <laughs> oh yeah. There you go. Anything else on the beautification grant updates? Going, going, gone. Thank you. Well, these will come before you at the next meeting because you did approve the application process. Um, even though they're minor changes, we still want them to, you know, they'll, they'll still come before you to the so first Friday of March and then we'll be good. Okay. Yes. So also spread the word if you have friends, family, or you know people in the community you talk to that you think might benefit from the beautification grant project when you're out and about, maybe talk to them and let them know that this is available and it's going to be coming open. And um, you know we'll also be advertising it and letting people know. So thank you. All right, Algiers Drive closure or discussion. Uh, yeah. So council obviously asked for this uh, presentation on here. Are you sending us the documents about prices and all that? I believe. Yep. What it will cost. Um, so, Cody, you want to give a, bit, a little bit, a little bit of background on what happened with this property, mm -hmm. um, how long it's been around, blah blah blah, and what, what they want, what we want, or not what we want, but just some of the background information for this. Yeah. Um, so I know I handed out the sheets and I'm going to do everything every teacher is not supposed to do until you not to look at them for a second when I talk because you're going to get confused. Um, so the how this property came, we talked about this, but I just want to go through it. Um, when this property was platted and the property south, meaning they became and they formed, um, they wanted a private street to have access. So they asked for a private road because it's not a built up city standards. We allowed it, but it became it stayed private, which means it was divided among all the parcels. So if you look at this on a parcel map, it goes down straight down the road on every parcel. So every parcel has a piece of it. They created an BOA or an HOA for businesses, um, a business association to maintain the road. Um, the agreement with that was that the road would be maintained to provide access to fire, um, utility vehicles, and that was that's what the agreement was. The fact that it was open to the public was a benefit, but it wasn't something they were required to do, but they had to maintain access to um, for fire emergency services and utilities. So as long as they could continue to do that, and that can be done several different ways. Some people put ballers in, some people put breakaway chains, some people put lock boxes with a knock box that we can have access to, anything like that, as long as we can have access. So now the road was closed. They didn't want to have public access, but there's still access for emergency vehicles. If you look on the Algiers side, it's a breakaway chain. On the other side, there's a lock that we have a key to. So that's how we are okay with them doing what they did. That's how we got to this point. We are at now. Questions? Why does it need emergency vehicle access? So in this field, so anytime there's a road that has any, our code requires private roads have emergency vehicle access and the reason just any time you can give more ways for emergency vehicles to get somewhere, it's a benefit. Specifically for those roads, they have re resuscitated people in those fields, um, different people that passed out or whatever, they had to resuscitate fire trucks especially. So having that access just proves that there's a reason to have that emergency access, but it's also our code requires private roads to have emergency access. How many lots are there? Is it four? Yeah, I think there's four total, five if you add the, the Dairy Queen connection that comes up into that. Okay, thank you. I say Dairy Queen, but it's that whole right. strip mall of stuff, yeah. yes. Right. Looking at uh, your assumptions here, are we talking about this is a 780-foot uh, road that is 32 feet wide? 
Do you want to yes. this sheet? Yeah, so there? going to the sheet, you can look at the sheet now. Um, how we got <laughs> how we got these cost estimates is we used Mosman that we just finished, right? Mosman was just finished. We used the unit prices from Mosman and applied it to this road to our best of our knowledge. Again, this is a rough figure. If we drill down into it, we could probably get the price slightly lower, um, but it was just based on what we used for Mosman. Uh, so would you look at a 780 feet of length from the road end to road end um, with center line? So that's how much payment you have to put in there. Uh, this is not calculating the little divot that goes down to the Gary Queen area, and it doesn't count the other divot that goes down to the post office. Mm -hmm. So those would stay private, those connections. We wouldn't build those for them. Normally, you don't do that. Um, if you look through this, the unit prices, you probably, some of you might have already figured out, LS is lump sum, CY is cubic yard, TN is ton, um, EA is each, and then you have square yard and cubic, or I think that linear foot's on there too. So we talk about building that road? Someone asked for a price estimate of how much it would cost to build that road. So that's why we created a price estimate. Uh, I've been to the 650000 So I said, estimate. if you remember, I said it would be a minimum of 650000 based on what I knew if we did a lot of the work in-house. This is if you got everything done third party. And Blair, just to, to kind of get, to remind you of the processes, last, uh, last month there was... Uh, brought up about the fact that this road was going to be closed and that there was discussion about going ahead and accepting because the businesses, they said, hey, we'll give you the strip plan. And I, I know that I'm one who I, I know I'm one who said I'd like to have a cost estimate before we started before we started discussion because um, for 780 feet, $1.5 million estimate. Now I, I, I'll make it clear. I'm against even considering accepting that. They need to bring it up the standard because even in their DOA, I bet if we dig down in their DOA, they will have both have failed at maintaining what they even agreed to on their DOA. And so that's not that's not good use of public funds. When that has up. nothing to do with the public, public though. Yeah. That's no, no, no. That's I'm the talking, no, I'm talking about us taking it and saying, yeah, we'll gladly take your your little. Uh, private road, and we'll spend $1.5 million bringing it up to city code just for 780 feet when that $1.5 million, where are we going to take it out of the budget? Are we going to not uh, purchase two new police cars? Are we not going to hire a new police officer? Are we going to cut positions that were just brought on board? Where are we going to find this $1.5 million? All right, all the point. That's what you have to look at. Did you just bring this so we would know how much it was, or is yeah. there actual plans of doing this? No, no, this is no. literally how much this is. There's no there's there's no, yeah, okay. there's no because it's part yeah. of the decision process. Is like, well, right. how much is this going to drop? Yeah, yeah. So you can't just say, yeah, let's do it, and not know how much it costs. We don't know how much they want for the property, right? Or oh, they're going to give it to us. So uh, the, when we weren't and nothing was signed or formalized, right. but they did mention that they would gladly cede the right of way to us to build the road. Um, just to not for knowledge that of exactly. that though, too, is that there still has to be surveying done. There has to be recording those documents, so that has to come from somewhere too. So it's not shovel ready. It's not shovel. Ready. There's no design. You guys use all these fancy terms. Yeah, you can, you can take a shovel and go out there, but you probably wouldn't. So it's design ready. It's not ready. You have shovel. Ready. It's not even design ready because we don't even have the right of way. Yeah. So they, they're, just, they're just giving us the right of way, not the property. No, we're giving the property. The right. So the right will be seated. Okay, okay. Nothing is official, guys. It's right, right. 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 just conversation. Yeah. It sounds like, like they'd be interesting to, to me. The three owners should probably dig through their BOA and consider legal action against the board. And it's not our damn business. No, no that, that's my view as well. Is that there? This here is for us to even go along with it because what we will do is we will for 78, 780 feet, we'll pay one point five million dollars, and yes, it will give a small seven hundred eighty foot stretch of road for people to drive through. But those businesses, those business owners, we just gifted them at taxpayer cost. Something that will improve their businesses that they will all of a sudden benefit we from greatly. Benefited and the citizens know. of Yelm for having another side street to use to make public. And what I what and then I so now that, we're jamming up Creek Street and all the other streets that we I'm we thinking, need more side streets to put cars on. 
I understand that. We need arterials. We can't have everybody jammed up on 507. I don't think it gives us that much. It's not going to help. Every little bit helps. No, I understand. Every little, that's the main. Okay, so is it worth two police cars? Is it worth another law? You can say that about a million other things. There's money in the budget you can find. If we take this, we've got to. Yeah, you can find that anywhere. I'm not saying streets are valuable. It's important to have streets to get people around in the city. This is a street that's used a lot by a lot of people, by the public. I didn't even know it was a private road. And if I was a business owner there, yeah, it makes no sense for me to fix this up and let the public use it. It makes zero sense as a business owner for that. Well, unless the public comes to your business, then it's worth yeah, it. That, right, but they have other access. The, the issue, 90% of the use of that road is the post office. Yes. The guy that owns the po property where the post office is doesn't want to that. spend money. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the, this isn't our problem. This is those other three owners that are part of that BOA need to review their BOA, consider getting a lawyer and suing that guy. Well, what are the other three people going to do if we just wash that's our hands of it? They're, no, they're, they're, they're not developing it. It's, it's just it's going to remain closed. Right. It's, it's going to remain closed, closed until they decide that they want to build something yeah. else in that area. And that might be right. what happens too. I yeah. mean, I'm not trying to say they're a chat or anything, but. They might be either trying to have us purchase it to build up, and in that case, you know, we might just be building it up for for those businesses. What happens if if we take the land, we build this road? They're then going to build businesses right along that road, mm -hmm. and that's what we want. And we say no. I, you want everything on five hundred seven? No, no, I'm it not. Jams up traffic. I'm Look not, at Meridian. I'm not subsidizing <laughs> one point five million dollars. For so some owner. property owners to build up more rental business space. Well, that's so we, what we want do to with all our we want to wait. push away business. Unless you're on 507, you can have your business on 507, but we don't want to encourage businesses to come off. We could subsidize this in all day if that's you want, Josh. Well, maybe right, we, we could, could get a grant for this. Yeah, we'll it's not subsidized. For, it's roads, you guys. for it's public benefit. Cody, can we, can we apply for a grant for that? If it wasn't private. Yeah, could, well, it's, it the difference happen. is there's quite a few empty commercial spaces now. Not that's like true. four years ago. Four years ago, there wasn't a single empty one. Now, there's a few of them. Mm -hmm. They're not empty, empty because businesses don't want to come here. They're empty because the property owners here are charging like the ass. Yeah, they're That's charging. What's going I'm on. talking about one strip in particular. Yes. yes. Because I know one. Those businesses are full of there. I mean, I don't think there's many vacant. No, so we're talking about a different, different strip. Yeah. No, just in general. No. Those ones, I think there's one or two over here. Where the CrossFit gym is? Yes. Mm -hmm. There's one or two open in there. And it's the same thing. They're, very nice they're charging people. almost $2,000 a month for the medium size units. Wonder what kind of businesses are building. So the builders, the, I mean, the owners are going to build. So this is because I mean, you brought all this, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. So if if this, this is just informative. it's just right. yeah, it's just for information only, right? Because right. right. you, I mean, but you if, need this if somebody felt strongly enough and they wanted to get it on an agenda, or something, agenda or something, they'd go with the public work, which I think you're on. Yeah. Part yeah. Of the public works committee. Okay. Um, so we have those right. people on those that yeah, committee um, vote to yeah, be okay. That's the case. Okay. Yeah, we'll just, go through. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Of that, have someone here. So this is just for right. Right. right now. Um, and I'm getting a, a mixed feeling from most people here. Uh, I'm getting like half and half. I'm not really sure. Is there anyone really um, adamant that this doesn't happen? I mean, in, in, I'm on the, in the aspect so, of what yeah. we're talking about right now, yeah. Yeah. But prior to even doing that, like I was, I'd like us to get a copy of this BOA and have someone competent who knows what they're doing. I, I, I don't know if we can get that. It, it should be public, it's right? Public. It is public. HOA, yeah. HOA stuff is public, right? Okay. Yeah. It's, public. It's public. We it's should be encouraging future business development. The fact that the post office is like a state agency makes no difference in the yeah. fact that they should have so, ingress and egress and multiple ways in and out. So. I I chat with the postmaster and they're looking at their contract currently, um, but I haven't heard back from them. That was before Christmas, so um, probably three weeks ago. I don't know. So there's no regulations about. because it's a public. I'm sure there's some. Well, I don't know. Maybe we could. Maybe that could be part of the legislative ask. What? Get the feds to pay for it since the the most of the use is for the, uh, this the, is for uh, a or state legislative. Uh, we don't have federal. Um, mm -hmm. 
I mean, we could bring you up to our yeah. person. Our but you know what I mean? It's not just yeah. like a grocery store. Which right? is like odd a, that they have a private Yeah, lease. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I thought it was kind of odd too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we'll get into that. I'm sure it's a long term lease, though. So yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. 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 I just uh, think it's odd that they. And how much that. would that do to have to pitch in to fix the roads to our standards? Like, that's why. But then the other option is the other idea that I have is 1.5, that's government costs. Private costs are way less than that. But we're government, though. I know. That, but that's also oh, if for them to just for them, them to fix them it up the city it. standards it's and then we acquire it. I mean, you can shoot yeah. off some, but it'll be a lot less. less. What he also said is this is if we paid someone else to do yeah, it. It's all third party. Yeah. But are some of those owners construction people with heavy equipment? <laughs> <laughs> they know I people. Just, can we start off? They are with those people. and get get some analysis on What's that. That seems the best best plan because. Private construction is always a lot cheaper than government because you have to pay. So we could just hire their crew. Just so do you want to have? No, he wants to get the BOA can't. and then discuss it. We can do further. the BOA. Um, I think there's a portion of this could be discussed in the executive session for discussing purchasing it, um, property wise and all that stuff. We'll obviously have to clear that with our attorney, make sure we're not violating uh, it. I'm kind of interested in what kind of footing we have to push the button for them to get it done. One does have to go through committee though first. I mean, I'm just I'm asking. Oh, uh, it here. sounds like you guys are split pretty good. I mean, is there anyone who would be opposed to this going to the committee to discuss further? I think the road's committee. important. It would go to the public. Well, public works committee. It is, yeah, it's important. It's this okay. is one piece right, of the right, puzzle. Right, right, roads right, important. Josh, it is your share for that committee. No, Brian is. Brian here. Oh, <laughs> I have no problem with it coming to the committee. It comes to I'm just saying, what's I will say I'm the very proper happy. staff. Is it you, Hallway? Who's on that committee? Me right. and Josh. And it's it's Josh. Okay, yeah. So if the three of you want to bring it forward, obviously you have one for adamant against one against it, one for it. I don't know where you're standing, Terry, but you're probably going to decision maker. I, I lean it. towards Council. doing have, something with said, it. I have no problem coming to coming through the, doing the process, but when we get to City Council, I will be. I'll gladly stay right now. $1.5 million for 70, 780 feet is not effective use of taxpayer money. And I agree with you, but we'll we'll bring it up through that process. As, as I said, no problem yeah. going through the process. But yeah. uh, one way couplet, so $1 million is 100%. For yeah, that's totally how great. long? That's how long, Mr. That's, that's more than that. Absolutely. And plus, we're reading parking for that, for the downtown area. That parking no, I'm not against yeah. this. I'm just saying. I'm saying it's all versus. Is it, are we talking yeah. about parking meters as part of this? No. Okay, no. good. But that's we'll money coming from a different. That's like yeah. Culture, right? Yeah. Versus, don't do that. No, I'm just. I mean, right now. First it's question is it? Yeah. The no, first question I would no want to approve is is it is it worthwhile? Or not? Ignore the cost. Is it a worthwhile road to have for the city? I used to have road a lot before. Yeah, I, no, I think it I is. Think. I do think it is, and I, I mean, think cost is yeah. part of it, but that's not the first question we should answer. First question we answer is: Is it even something that is really worthwhile for the city to pursue? Like the city should have this. It's like important I to wanna, people. I want to answer that, but I'm going to answer it very specific because I know there's a lot of people who That's want a specific it. answer. The road is important for the city, as in the people that live here, right? Not the city. That's where I'm at. It's an it's a it's a good road to have because right now getting in and out of there is an S show. Look at me. I like my <laughs> So I get it, but I don't want to jump straight to hey, let's take the property and fix the road. What I want, no. what I what I want to do right yeah. now, and what, why I've said it, first step, I want to hopefully let's get a copy of this BOA, have someone review it that knows what the heck they're looking for. I tr I'm trying, man. <laughs> uh, have someone review it, see if we have any footing to push the issue for them to get it done. I like the way you think, James. Yeah. We can do this. But if you want to look if, further, if though, there's any yeah. kind of agreement, something, whatever that they didn't do that they were supposed to do, a private road that's between them, though. Look, how about this? We do some back work, see if there's any um, legal footing that we have, um, any pressure we can put on them from the city to fix it or whatever like that. We'll um, ask our attorney, bring it to the public works committee. They can decide whether it's, you know, oh, yeah, we can do it or not. 
go to the council at another study session and then put it on agenda if that's what council decides. Well, I think, we, well, right. I think we also need a representative from them, the BOA. Well, that was the next, was okay. we find we can't do anything. Because, yeah, this, this, have, this is let's a, have a piece conversation of it, but with the three that are willing to do something and see what we can do to help them yeah. get it done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you say 1.5, we're like, well, that's negotiated. So you want to do it right. kind of the way I outlined and then as a backup, do that, or do you want to? How do you, how would you like to proceed here? I think first steps is get that review yep. away. We can do that. Have someone review it that knows what they're. Have our attorney at. review it. Okay. Figure out where, what, like what we, the. I don't know. What we're different. Yeah. What we're, if what we could put ourselves available, to do yeah. the yes. To the field. And the reason why I say we need to do that is because homeowner associations they have the same thing. Homeowner associations, I can speak for one that I that's defunct, even though it's uh, where I live, is responsible for two storm drains. If those two storm drains all of a sudden fail and the city goes in and inspects them and goes, hey, it's going to cost money to fix these, then the because there's no homeowner association, every house, if they can't figure out a private contractor to come out and fix them and the city fixes them, every house in that area gets a lien put against it for the repairs. And so that's a violation of the HOA that we didn't maintain the property that was supposed to be maintained. Yeah. So same thing with the BOA. If somewhere in there is the statement of, we will have a private road and we will maintain this private road to a certain standard, they shut it down because they failed to do that. That's what, that's their, they have to own up to that, which means that, hey, if the repercussion is, the city found due to a safety factor that you can't have that road like that, but you have it in there that you said you would maintain. Right. Go in, fix it, and put the lien on their property. We'll or get the agreement. We'll have it reviewed. Yeah, we can't do that. No, because it's private. But we'll have okay. a yeah. private that's, road that's can it. have a. This is where we're getting, we're getting into legal stuff. That's not my purview. That's not that's yours or anyone that's sitting here. They can no, also I want to see have it. a written Let's road maintenance and, and agreement within their but we, but, but, road but we have a plan, right? We have a plan yeah. moving we forward. Need to the, the plan is Cody's, Cody's going to get the BOA. Joe's going to have our attorney look at it, see if there's any, this is my understanding, there's any way possible that the city could put pressure on them or something to... What actions? Yeah. What yep. Any type of actions. Then yeah. also yep. you three yeah. would bring it to... Public, I think you're on the public, public services, public, public services, service. and see if you want it to get more information. Uh, in. Public service, when, what dates? I, I, I'm not on. So I don't know. Well, I'm saying the next meeting. If we can get all the information, yeah. we'll do it for this one. If we can't, we will do it the next one. Have all the information first, and, and, yep. and then public also, of course, yeah. If that public services then have representative, will all of them want to come? For discussion, we can ask them, but I can't make them. Well, I know you yeah. can't make them, but ask them if they would so we get their opinion because they're the owner of it, they should. But would we want to have a discussion first? Just I don't know. I think I it's know. part of decision making and negotiation. I think, I think well, it's there's no the information, there's no reason to bring them in. There is a negotiation, there's there's no negotiation. negotiable. It's at that public works, yeah. yeah. No, well, that's decided, but I mean, it helps no with conversation. There is conversation, yes, conversation yes, that will point. affect negotiations down the road. Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Everything's negotiable. Moving. Like. Are we done with that? Uh, yes. uh, I hope so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Next, Next public service. Uh, we have fun for next. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Woo! Cody, you want to some fee schedule? Uh, yeah. So, do you have anything else? This thing feels definitely like HLA. <laughs> oh. yeah. Has anything changed? Anything changed in our no, well, last meeting? It's a whole new year, Councilmember Crossman. <laughs> from our last fee <laughs> schedule meeting, has anything changed in the fees from the last fee schedule meeting? We'll talk about that. I'm going to use the restroom. And that's okay. what I was asking. Pass, they don't pass it down. Let's make a decision on Josh Rosario. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the same one she gave Here we go. You might, you might have already had. You have Everything's to. Everything's negotiable. You do, you do have to. Is it two pages? One page? But mine's yeah. on two pages. So yeah. I'll take it. Yeah. Uh, it's all one page. I haven't seen this yet. Do also one page. Okay. Here we shot. That should be. Uh, do you, is there one more down there we need? Wait, Terry needs one. Yeah. And then, yeah. There we go. Todd, you okay? 
Good. Taking a little nap. <laughs> okay, I have a couple more hands, but I don't want to give them to you now because I know how that goes. Um, so the first thing you have in front of you, um, and we'll brief the other council members and come back, is just a cost estimate. This was done by our communications and recreation coordinator um, with some input from different departments about what it costs the city in terms of time that wouldn't normally be spent when an event tries to come in. So you can see those under there. And we took two events. We just took a generic event at City Park. We didn't name any single one. Um, and then we took the movie event at Longmire that happens on a regular. Um, so you can see kind of where the costs lie with what we're planning to charge at the top, the breakdown of everything below, and then what the net loss to the city is. Again, our only stressor here is this is a service we're providing and trying to recoup some of that cost, right? Council's decision or what council wants to do is if you want to subsidize those costs for these events, that is totally your decision. It's just us showing you what the difference is and us trying to recoup some of that cost. That's all we are trying to provide you with here. So I want you to look at this. Is there any questions about anything on here or how we came up with these numbers? Why does it cost bathrooms all day so much? Yeah, so the bathrooms all day, usually on a, most events take place on a Saturday. So we assume this would be a Saturday event. Um, we normally don't have staff sitting at City Park managing the bathrooms all day. They rotate between all the parks. We have one guy or one girl on a Saturday that does all the parks. When an event happens, we put two people at that park to manage bathrooms and trash because it's just how it works. The, they generate a bathroom usage, a lot of trash usage. And number one complaint we get is, why are the bathrooms dirty or the trash is overflowing? Because what people won't do is they won't go to the event coordinator and say, hey, event coordinator, because they can't find them. Hey, you need to help with the trash and bathrooms. They go, city, your trash and bathrooms look like trash. Can you come fix them? And so we just now staff those all with two people and we know there's an event, regardless if that event has volunteers or not, because they don't always have volunteers. So that's where that bathroom and trash, that's two people, eight hours at those events. Any other questions? So this before you, the two council members that came back is just a cost city cost estimate for an event, a normal Saturday event, and then a, the Longmire movie event that we normally hold on. And you can see what the price is that we have on top, along with what the city loses, the net loss to the city, how much were the city is subsidizing these events. And the right, the only goal of this is to make sure you guys are aware of that. Um, next, right. I have a question. Yes, uh, okay. the extra mowing is that just because you go in and mow the day before, and mowing is actually maybe scheduled on Tuesday or Wednesday? Correct. So, normally we mow the parks, we mow them twice a week. We normally add in a third day if there's an event coming up this Saturday. We mow the day before on a Friday. Most time we mow on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Okay. So, we add in an extra mow day for those events. Same with uh, Longmire, especially. The movies, not as much, and that's why you don't see any extra prep. You, we do a little bit of extra mowing, but not much for the movies. For the other events like baseball, football, we do mow before those events happen to keep fresh grass. Yes? How do you do an extra mow? We always grass mow right before the event. Awesome. We, like to, we like to keep it nice and cut clean. If you ever played baseball where the grass is a little shaggy. No, we not playing small. baseball in City Park. But. No, but we do. So for mowing on these events, a lot of these times they'll have uh, different things up, tents, tarps, um, things on the field. We want to get the grass cut as low as possible, people laying on the grass. So we always just do an extra mow before they come out to make it clean. Do we have to do that? No, it's just something we do to make it go like back to take your pants. So, yeah, it may be there. Um, <laughs> next up, there's a lot of these. Take there's a, It's a three-pay or four-page thing. This is a, somebody asked for the permit application. When someone does a part, just grab one and pass it down. It's four, four pages. Four pages. Yeah. Four oh, here. Someone asked about this. This is the permit application. Um, this would be what someone would fill out when they want to do an event. The reason we had this is because it specifically has rules about the park, usage of the park, what you get, what you don't get. It very specifies what you're allowed to do and not do. I know there was confusion between council about, well, if I rent the park, what do I get? Right. So that's, it really breaks down kind of what you get and what your things are going towards. <laughs> The, and this is park, not community center. This is yeah. This is just any park, any park in the cities. I can't snow unless we have a So you can keep that. That's for you. Um, you can't smoke unless you have authority to smoke in the park. Yeah. So there is no tobacco use on city park grounds. So you notice people. What? Yeah. <laughs> 
I know. So you'll notice, like, even it's same like school district. School district, you notice the employees will actually walk off. Vaping. Vaping is different. Technically, yeah. right here. <laughs> right here. It's my home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, and then there's one other thing. We didn't print out copies of these, but you can pass this around. This is what the school district charges. So there's one thing. Well, taxpayers fund this. Why do we? We should. No one should get charged. It's taxpayer funded. I also every school district we looked at, we pulled up Young Community Schools and what they charge That's for use smart. of their facility per hour. So you can see that this is also a tax payer funded thing that they also charge for their use. So you can just look, scan it and pass it down. May I ask when you grabbed that, does it say when it was last re revised? I can rent yeah. the gym. Yeah. yeah, you can rent the gym, but it costs per hour. And then if you notice on the back, here's a really That's cool thing on the back. Time. Is no matter what they charge you custodian cleaning yes. fees. It, yeah, yeah, because I've tried to rent school yeah. before. You don't get it back. Yeah. There's no deposit. There's nothing to get back. You get charged this cleaning fee regardless. Twenty-five dollars. So, I I see one of these. Uh, all organizations group will provide their own dumpster that. for any event over five hundred people. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the dumpster, like the truck backs it up, drops it, and goes away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or have they been before garbage or garbage cans? So barbecue rally provided all their own garbage cans. They had all the garbage cans picked up. Um, one of the events, the so what did they do with all the jazz fest brought a, a no jazz fest did not. What happens with the garbage if we just use the garbage cans? They they came and picked up. We they moved them all. Well, I have help. We moved them all to the area and they came no, and picked no, them up. Talk about the bags of trash. Yeah, the man picks them up. Yeah, they may pick them all up. Like they don't leave out; it stays in there, and they go with the cans. Are you, oh, so you're, you're talking Lemay comes and drops like the big cans. They're like, I don't know, they fifty gallon. They're, yeah, they're big fifty gallons, and then they just like, up, I think, yeah. Yeah, there's like we have like twenty. I thought you were talking Lemay about the cans are around. No, no, those ones are still there too. And they and so what happened like that event? They serviced those trash cans. The people there volunteers serviced those trash cans, and they had the extra trash cans for that, so it handled all the trash. Other events, there was one event, I can't remember what it was often, I don't want to say it was somebody, they brought a dumpster in and just threw all the trash bags in the dumpster so they didn't fill up ours. City-sponsored events, we'll normally bring, use our own dumpster and haul stuff back. The categories are interesting to me because we had more categories the first time. So if you're just wanting to reserve one of the covered bench areas for a birthday party, you're going to throw out all this? No. That's thank you. Yeah, I want to separate that mm -hmm. from this park wide event. Yeah, this is a community, <laughs> a community. That's the key with this one. It's a community event, right? We don't allow um, reserving the park for a private event. You can't go. I'm taking the whole park. I'm reserving it for a private event. No one can come in. These have to be community events. That's part of the stipulation. Okay. Um, the next thing is we didn't. So the fees have stayed the same. Nothing has changed. I know you guys have read them ad nauseum, but I have them here so you can pass them around just to look at them again. The fees are exactly the same. The only thing you'll notice we changed and $250 closet because there's confusion if the $500 was with the $250 closet or if the mm -hmm. $500 was without the $250 closet. Mm -hmm. So about $250. No, I'm going to grab my copy. Okay. So I know you've looked at that and that's the thing. So I really, we just wanted to show you the city costs of what it costs to run an event on average, not they're all not exactly the same, but this is the cost, what the net loss is to the city, what we, you, the council and the city are subsidizing for these events. Um, and then just, it's your decision what to do, right? We don't, the city is just providing you the information. Council, you have the joy of making the super easy decision about whether you're gonna charge or not for the park. Director Cole. Yes, Council. Um, one of the confusions in reference to this whole fee mm -hmm. thing is the, I want to reserve and rent for my child's birthday party. And yet nowhere on here. And we asked, I think I even asked, is are we looking at when we're renting the park, are we only looking at for the whole park? Or are we looking at, hey, there's this pavilion area. I want to use it for my son's birthday. And so what's it cost me to rent that? And if that rent is the $500 compared to having the whole park, that's where I had a little bit of confusion of why are we charging somebody who's going to use a whole park versus somebody who's going to use a small portion of the park. I thought I answered it, Megan. Is um, it's this is for community events for okay. the whole public. A private event is first come first serve basis. On so those. okay, so we're looking at right now. We're not discussing the birthday parties, uh, the 
team wants to do a big celebration and pizza party or anything else like that, we're looking at uh, Bobby May, Bobby Joe decides, hey, I want to have a car rally and we're going to rent the park to do the car. As long as that car rally is open to the public? Yes. yes. No, that's what I meant. Mm -hmm. that, okay. That's all work. So these are community events. That's literally what we're looking at for. This is the park fees, right? Park, Not the community park, center. Okay. This is park fees. Here we go. Right. And just to clarify, these park fees, if you rent the whole park for a community open event, that includes the community center during that event. Okay? That was, I know, confusion part there too. So if you rent the park for a community event, it includes... different. Yes. So yeah. $500 includes the... Yeah. Okay, that was right? before. Yes. Period. And that yes. was... Oh, Lynn oh, oh, oh. and I went back and forth on this, but that's the idea is that this would be... Because you're running the park for the community event, you should also get the community center. Why would you have an open public event all around the community center and someone's in there? But sense. isn't it almost cheaper to rent the park than just the community center? Yeah, yeah. that's the yeah. idea because you're doing a public community event. So you're still benefiting the public. So why, would someone, they, why wouldn't someone just rent the community center? In yeah. the park instead of just the community center because it's cheaper that way. Because it has to be an open public event. So you can't have your... You can't have your wedding do something. If you do have an event that's open, once, mm -hmm. whatever event, like the chamber wants to, to run it for, you know, their monthly thing, wouldn't it be cheaper just to rent the whole park? Or are we already no. running the chamber? The monthly thing's not open to the public, though. It's you have it's to pay to get yes in. It it's is. Like, yeah, it is. But yeah, go ahead. It would be a cost difference of $500 or $100. Yeah, it's so she's not all day. Yeah. 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 So yeah, you're getting all like if you had a yes, you had a wedding, you're like, I want everybody from the public to come to my wedding and I'm gonna have food fault. Yes, you could rent the entire park if you're gonna do an all-day event and you can and save, you save, save a hundred bucks. Yeah. Save a hundred dollars. So I guess congratulations. I know, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll talk about the last uh, to show you the school the last meeting that uh city council meeting that we had when we had the guy from the Boy Scouts uh yeah. Yeah. thing. Well, he was talking. So his, I think his dilemma was that the community center was so out of reach as far as rent. I think that's next. Then, okay. Next, I'm going to pass around a waiver request form that was asked for. This will be so we have the stars on the bottom, but we'll actually include at the behest of a certain city clerk. Um, we will include this in the ordinance or the resolutions. So that way, that is clear and you can definitely see it, right? Which makes total it makes sense to do that. So I'm going to pass this around so you can see. So anyone that has any Boy Scout troop, any nonprofit um, that felt like their event was too expensive to do it here and they wanted to do something for the community, could, could submit a request form, waiver request form. And so council would be the approved. approval on that. And that was mentioned in the meeting as well, that there was going to be a waiver and that was up to council to approve. But I think everybody kind of missed that. Yeah. And so that's going to come around now. So I think you explained that wrong, though. The waiver request is the administrative one goes to the oh, mayor and correct. then it would go to the council. Because they they wanted to get yes. Okay. So on this, mm -hmm. then can this be changed to say that it includes the community center? Because I, I did not realize yeah. that at all. Yeah, we can add, we can, add, we'll you know add what that. I mean? If it, it does, yeah. The community it's center and the kitchen? The community center, it's the no, whole community the center. Kitchen. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So I had no idea. Okay. I didn't understand. How come it's not that yeah, same way for Longmire Park then? Longmire Park works a little differently. Um, the, when you do it, we haven't had many events at Longmire Park where the entire park is taken up. Normally it's a baseball field here, a football field here. There was one of, and they didn't even use the whole park, they just used the football field. That's why we separated those is because oftentimes you'll have a baseball team come in, but then like a mom's group will rent out the kitchen to sell hot dogs that day. It's not the baseball team normally renting out the kitchen. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. So it rotates with who's doing that. It just has worked differently that way. Okay. Tournaments, we have done that where we include okay. um, a fee. So like the Nisqually Basin had a tournament and we did a fee for the entire park that included the kitchen. So we can add that in there, but it's not a set thing where you rent the park and get the whole thing. It's a little different with sports fields and just how they save them versus the park. Thank you. Okay. For our farmers market, mm -hmm. um, would they use this waiver form to get a reduced, potentially reduced fee for the community center public ongoing event? Or how is that going to be looked at? Well, this is talking about the park. The right. community center is a little different. We have we have a fee schedule already for the community center. The new fee schedule just provided a nonprofit rate, which that's what the farmer market would fall under, would be a nonprofit rate for the community center. And how much is that? That's not what I'm this. Is that the 200? That's not the 200. What? Well, now we know. Yeah. What is category one, category two, category three? Category one is city of Yelm groups. So it's anyone from the city. So if Councilmember Hess want to do an open house 
um, for all the public to come to and listen to him talk about streets. That will be a city sponsored <laughs> event. Not that you'd want to do that, but I'm just saying streets. Um, if we want to do a vaccine clinic, uh, if we wanted to do, I know, if we wanted to do a COVID testing site, if we want to do a young community services where they had a bunch of stuff there and provided, you know, help to people, like where we had an outreach fair, that could be that kind of thing. Group two is verified nonprofits, so they have to be a very, yeah, they have to be. And a verified how much is the community center okay. rental for a nonprofit? Uh, fifty dollars an hour. Yes, yeah, fifty dollars an hour. So the farmer's market is 10 to 3, 10, 5, that's $250 every time. They start normally earlier. They normally come in at what, 6, 7? Yeah. I, I, I don't have to look and see yeah. what kind of meeting happens. I mean, not, but I would sound a little bit more for there that I don't have to Yeah. That's still open to the public. So two hundred fifty dollars per weekend, right? Or they could they, they could waiver yeah. and ask for a That's better amazing. price. Or they could just rent the whole park. Yeah, no That's and, right. yeah, whole park, five hundred yeah. bucks all day. Enjoy. Yeah, because it's an open thing, so the farmers market could do that. Yeah, it's open to the public. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm, I'm Go ahead. Can I clarify the city of Yelm groups? That would be like the city council. The historic commission, the creative sector. Not just groups within the city. Right. Yeah. So here, here's my question. What's farmers market paying per week right now? Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. So we're gonna ask them to go from paying nothing to probably five hundred dollars a week. They can't afford that. Yeah, they can't. No. But we I wouldn't want to lose that public event. So then we'd have them fill out that. They would be do a waiver, waiver situation and come and talk to whoever's in charge and, or they do like and negotiate city, that. And we just do it on the street. A lot of cities do that. Right? They can't do that because they don't have bathrooms and all that other stuff. And then you can't close the street. Do it? That, that, they don't have the right infrastructure. One way at the activated one way is right. to be able to bring in that capability right. of doing street fairs and doing things. But we're not ready yet for that. No, right. Not. But I would just say they need to come and make a waiver of some kind or some special fee. I mean, because it's kind of bridges both. It is a community event. It's something we've worked years for to get going where it is. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we never did discuss. These are one-offs for the most part. Mm -hmm. Jazz festivals, one time a year. Mermaid Huge festivals. Events. Yeah. But if they're one time a year, whereas the farmer's market is weekly mm -hmm. for X amount of months. That is um, included in the park rental um, request form, where it says, I don't have one in front of me, but it, uh, this is for one-off events where you're not monopolizing the space for multiple weeks in a row. Again, okay, I don't have it right in front right. of me. You would. So who would they come but, to talk to about But I mean, that? they don't get, there's no, I guess, I never thought about that aspect of it. There's no, just like I said, I get jazz festival, mermaid festival, all that. It's just, it's one time a year. Whereas the farmer's market is is once a week for uh, whatever it is, four months, five months. And we never talked about like a discount, you know, a, if, if you're going to rent this space for X amount of, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. We never talked about that. I never thought about that. So, but if I, but if I remember correctly, oh, one man. of the it was either the study <laughs> session or during one of the council meetings, it was brought up that we are going, we are trying to find a way to move the farmers market out of that and get them somewhere else because the city was losing. Uh, the capability of events that wanted the community center that were willing to pay the full price. And true, so, true. you know, we, but because we made it so that they could have it every Saturday, it blocked it everybody blocked. else. Out. And yeah, so that's, that's why we we're trying yeah. to find a way. And yes. again, it comes down to the two streets that we can get those uh, taken care of quickly and get it done. And that mm -hmm. helps push them out there. And I think it just area. becomes the health department. You have to have water, bathrooms, yeah. and um, uh, handicap access. There's all of those things that you have to have. We'd have to talk with the managers. I don't know the details. So my yeah, my question is, why does I'll play the 
the what some people might consider the bad guy. Um, yeah, so other questions. <laughs> Why does the farmer's market get special treatment? Because it's, it's special. Because it's, 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 it's special. It's not special. It's every week. The history, the history yeah. behind that, it was agreed upon with previous, uh, with previous administration. It was agreed upon to give them so many years free access so that they could build up the clientele. They could build up the Who business. That, that is what um, I I'd ask about that. That's what I was told. Needs to be. No, that that's true. That's what I was told. It is true. It it is true. true. It it true. true. It it and last year was the last year of that. This year is the first year that they actually have to pay. And so they've had three years to build up their clientele, build up the, hey, everybody comes and be able to prove the proof of concept that yes, they are a worthwhile element that they whether you want to call it profit or they break even, that they're able to do that. And so now that's one of the things that we as a city council are going to have to try to figure out is how are we going to, are we going to allow them to continue or do we turn to, as it was brought to our attention, that there are people who want to do weddings, who want to do other events that the community center was built for and advertised for and everything and gone against the two times voted on by the public. What? This community center. Yeah, yeah. Two times the public said, no, we don't want this. Mm -hmm. And finally somebody said, okay, well, here's the square footage, just enough that the public doesn't have to get involved. We're building it. And part of the advertisement and the thing of it was, this is going to be where wedding venues can be done. We're going to be able to bring in all these things like conventions and all this other stuff. And so this year is going to be our first year dealing with the farmer's market of, do we continue to give, you know, is that the benefit or do we want to look so, at all the other ones that want to have the, access to the foreign so, market? Hold on. There, the con I, don't, I don't know about all that, Brian. I, there is a contract we've had in the past for the years. The reason we haven't been getting money from them is they haven't reached thresholds. It's a $10,000 threshold. Uh, they say they haven't been making that $10,000 each year. That's why we're not making okay. that. So I don't know about the handshake agreements you're referring to and all that stuff, but what it is now is we could have done this last year too. Um, I don't know about the um, about the, the waiving fees and all that stuff, but um, where we're at now is it, regardless of that farmer's market, and I appreciate you playing devil's advocate and all that, um, and the positives and negatives of having a farmer's market, but we're not just dealing with a farmer's market here. Um, it's all these groups. We got to look at a holistic approach and not just- That's why I'm getting towards. In this way, it's the most fair for everybody. And whether you fit, in, fit into it or not, I mean, you, we can say that there's, you know, certain groups and events that are better than others or more betterment for the community and all that, but this is the most fair way to standardize these fees. If, if we don't standardize and we have that, what we've had for years and years, or if you, as the mayor, you know, say, oh, you're a great group. I like your group. Let's, let's give it to you for free or whatever. That's not right. That's why we put it in here where if, you know, there's only A, B, and C you can fit into um, for, for that waiver. You don't meet, meet any, all those requirements, so you don't get it. It's not just me saying, you know, because you're a buddy of mine, or I like this group, or I don't like this group, you get it or don't get it. You have to fit to a certain mold. And if if they don't disagree, if they disagree with my decision, they go to the council, and the council will decide, well, you did, you followed A, B, or C, or you didn't, and you can make a decision there. Other than that, everyone's got to, I mean, my opinion, you got to pay something, you got to have it standardized for everybody. No, I think they're be, they'd be willing to pay something, but yeah. I think it's a big but the, the, It's the same thing. Yeah. It's the fairness. That's why that's my question is getting that. Yeah. Is the fairness because they are a group of a collection of small business owners yeah. selling their wares. There are many events at the park of that's the exact same thing. A collection of small business so owners an selling their wares. For all the kids at school with the pop program and all that it's, good stuff. All of and those it a, are it a city partner, so it's standardized. City a partnered nonprofit to wanted, the benefit of the city yeah. and the kids in the community. Just want to remind people why we're having this discussion again about the fees is because the individual that came to the city council meeting about utilization, which we have the waiver. So that's a different concept. That's a different. So now we're talking about outside of that. Did anybody from the farmers market uh, attend that city council meeting to show up and, and share any of their feelings? Well, they were, they reached out to me. They reached out oh, to yeah, you. Cool, cool. Cool. Yes, they did. Okay, that's good. And so as long as there's people that are sharing their their you know expression of like you know I, I don't I'm a, and then you talked to them that's great mm -hmm. and we can have the conversation. But I was really impressed with people showing up at the meeting. And I'm like, that's, that's the only reason why we're having this because that, that gentleman showed up. And, and so if we got to expound upon that, then we do. 
Um, but yeah, I love, I love this where this is going, but I just want to make sure that my dudes represented with the waiver and not easy there. This is another conversation with the farmer's market. So let's continue. We've had those conversations too with the farmer's market. We just had one. <clears throat> so right after our last council meeting, um, we met with them and that was part of the reason, you know, I, I like to have seen this complete last year. Again, that's what it impacted that, that conversation. So, um, whether or not they can go ahead and move forward impacted, um, the chamber, and there's a couple others, but other than that, this is fine. But that's the only impact they had, not making the event. So we are communicating with farmers, we're communicating with other groups that were, are interested in this, letting them know, you know, after the city council decides, hopefully next week, we will have those um, conversations about running and all that. So we'll make our standard prices and then the talk to them. The Correct. We'll make, yeah, we'll standardize this, lock in the I'm prices sorry. and all that, and then. Um, each product market that. varies. Hey, Cody, it depends on their partnership with the city and how invested yeah. they are. Can you give us a recap on the, there was some, a lot of stuff here that was revitalized and clarified. So when we have an understanding of coming into that vote, we know what we're voting on again. Yeah, so, so the big thing I want to point out is there was a big hang up on the park fees, right? That's, it seemed like the rest of the fees, and I mentioned that during the meeting, is that yeah. there's multiple, there's you know five tables in here. Make sure you look at all of them. The one thing I want to make sure is there's no other issues with any other tables. Um, just to clarify, the only hang up with me was charging private people to use it. Yeah, that's right. the only thing that I had the issue with. Is if John Doe wants to use one of the covered areas mm -hmm. for whatever reason and they want to reserve it, we're not charging them for that because and I, I had this conversation with city administrator earlier. I understand there's cost to the city, but from citizens' point of view. That's what they're paying for. But they can't reserve it. They can't reserve it. There's no reservation. It's I thought we were, we had talked about being able to reserve the covered areas. Yeah, we talked about, about it. The, mm -hmm. We don't the, even know if we're going to have covered yeah, areas. They may not be there next year. We have to work but that out. Okay. We're going to have it. Probably next year. But there's no charge. It's the first time we serve no charge. So the city is offended. The people are so I, I did want to make sure that there's other tables in there. And so some of the other stuff that got held up is like we we're trying to lower the home occupation fee. So people are waiting to do their home ops until January. Well, they are still waiting because they're hoping the fee will go lower because we had it proposed to I go think lower. Just eliminate it. So there's there's a, yes, so there's other fees in there I want you to look at or make sure you're okay with when this comes. But it's easy if you're still not sure about one thing to take out a table and we can bring it to a later meeting. We can always amend the resolution if you guys, hey, we're still not solid on these, we want to pull this table out. You can do that and the rest can pass because there's a lot of other things being held up that people are waiting for, fees that we don't have established or fees that are high that we're lowering that we would like to get adopted just, or just know that they're not going to get adopted so we can move forward. Don't get a packet. Yeah. We have the so table. Yeah. No, not in the full. It's, it's right. I think I, I had it passed around. Both right there. Yeah. Tell Mark you guys have it. Right there on your front. Your top. Your top. Oh, this? Yeah. I only had one because I figured you guys had it. No, we do. Got it. Yeah. I'm yeah. good with it. I don't care about it. That way, when we vote, we know what's already being presented. Correct. We're not surprised. It's, yeah, it's going to be the yeah. exact same thing. No. <laughs> yeah, like one step didn't realize. Lose some interest. Yeah. Just. Got a fee. Oh, you were charging an hour or Yeah, we changed the hours to just events. You saw that in your last one. It was just events in your last one. Yeah, just events. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Three years ago. Lot fees wouldn't work. But what we did, we did flat fee for all day. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's no longer hourly for the park. For the, well, fee, so. the community center has the waiver, remember? Can we do just a flat on the community center for residents? You can do whatever you want. Um, the, I'm asking you. <laughs> I think as the, someone who's been working the community center a lot recently, what would be the challenges of doing like a flat all day fee for just a just me off the street? Yeah, but if you're going to use two hours. A flat fee, the majority of people would be paying more than what they're paying now. So Cody could come in on a random Tuesday afternoon and rent it his space for a hundred dollars. What? If it was a flat fee for a full day, he wouldn't be able to rent it for two hours. He would have to take it for ten hours, eight hours, five hours at a larger amount to cover those costs. For average resident, 
It's someone rents that. What are they using renting it for? Um, I have so January. I have three memorial services, a um, a birthday party. I have a eagle Cub Scout kidding. Um, I have a few meetings. Um. Lots of things. Lots of, okay. lots of different things. So of those things, everything sounds like something that normally someone would pay to go rent a space to do anyway. But like mm -hmm. the Eagle Scout one, that's the one that they, I, they should put a waiver to. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they can. And they can. Yeah. And, yeah. and they'll be able to. Yeah. 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 That's understood. All right. Problem solved. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. I'm good. So are we good on the fee schedule for now? For now. Okay. If there's any adjustments that need to be made or you want made, I, I'm it's going to be a quick turnaround to get it on the next meeting. Okay. So I can do that, or if there's things you guys want to think about, we can push it to the end of January. I just want to get your feeling on it. Sounds like next, Put it on the next one. Okay. Let's get this done. We haggled it to death. <laughs> were you yes. saying, Cody, that the one that you just passed around, this guy, is not the one that we were given at the city council meeting? Last you this one still had just some it's the one you were given, but there's some line through like we got rid of the hours and made the flat fee. That one is the right one. This no, this this is the same as that that it's you that passed that around. I don't know what that is, but the one on your Maybe, right hand. Could you okay. send it back out? Maybe yeah, I'll send it back. Make sure that we'll everybody... look at your council packet. Yeah. 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 Council packet, yeah. That'll for work. Tuesday. <laughs> I'll resend your council packet to <laughs> so you. Thank you. As long as this one you have. Okay. All right. Mayor's report. Or, yeah, the only thing I have is um, on January 18th, there will be a, a hall meeting um, for it's the one I've been chatting about for a while now. We finally secured gates with Congresswoman's office, um, Commissioner Iha's office, um, it's the chair of the county, and then hopefully Andrew Barkis as well. Um, so that would give us congressional state county and then here locally um i'll be on as well moderating it hopefully holly as well um wait what is this you're saying if you're interested if not no worries yeah. see the city portion. we'll talk more about it all right um but yeah so it's just an hour long six o'clock to seven o'clock um people can ask whatever they want can't or um can you remember seeing yeah just ask whatever it um, is it just, live it'll be live yeah okay. where i just how what do you mean? Is it live? Yeah, are you going you to the legislature? Yeah. What's your curious job? Are you, are you talking about going to the legislature? It's a town hall. A town hall. Yeah, it'll be here at the community center. Oh, um, yeah. Sorry, I should have said that. I, I you said that. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> I, I, that's what I was like, live. Uh, I was like, town hall's live. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm just asking. I didn't specify that. That's fair. Uh, because yeah, I think have heard this, this it, part of um, the Realtors Hill Day is on this day, I think. And we can go to the legislature and meet our people. Oh. <laughs> People okay. in person, so I thought it might have been part of that. So oh, I didn't no. hear that. Sorry. No, no. Um, okay. This is just town hall. You know, <laughs> no, that was your pen. You didn't hear it. He said that everywhere. Yeah, well, it'll be a public, it'll be public yeah. announced meeting. So council is encouraged okay. to attend. Uh, get free ask questions. No, uh, but yeah, it'll be a good opportunity for the public to ask questions for different levels of government. In a one stop shop for everybody. And you don't have to fill out an application for this. You do. You do have to fill out an application to attend. No, I'm talking about the city utilizing the building. The city. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, we don't have to ask for that. It'll be $200. Yeah. $200. You will pay yourself. We will pay ourselves. Did you say that once? I didn't catch that. Two from tomorrow. Oh, dear. Yeah. January 18th. Yep. The Congressman's office is going to advertise, will advertise. Um, Sure, other folks will too. But yeah, and please, we'll put it on probably tomorrow as the um, our on social media to pull weeks of advertisement, putting paper, um, all that. Please share it if you see it. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Joseph. You know, I just really appreciate you guys. Cody, thanks for the work on that and, and doing the whole waiver and the understanding. I really appreciate the Algiers conversation with the BOA. James, you're a really smart individual, and Hess, you guys are like polar. It's like you guys are really good uh, at, at investing things. So um, thank you. Thank you for great minds and a uh, great, great team here. I, I really like all this stuff that's happening and just watching Todd over there smiling, cringing moments. It's, it's really exciting. <laughs> good work. Thanks for the team. Thank you, Justin. Yeah. Okay. 
anything else? No, I just I, I really like how we handle business. Good initiative. Terry, <laughs> initiatives. I don't really have anything right now, but I just wanted to ask, did we follow up with that gentleman that request that had that issue about the bathroom? Mm -hmm. Like, I just I think it's important. That. I want to know what happens when people reach out and ask us questions that we get back to them in some way. And I want to know what we said so we know. I don't think we did. Okay, that's I, not very good. No, it's not. I will um, you write that get, down, please. Yeah, I'm writing it down right now. <laughs> we'll reach out to them, but we'll get them the information to contact the um, executive director for the TRL, though, because yeah. that's it is there. Yeah, it's just, and yeah. I just say that because that's fair. There was one time I I reached out to uh, three council people from Tonino who never even answered my emails, and I'm like, you know what? That's me. And I don't want us to be that way. Yeah. When people, with people, yeah, you know, we want people to be interested at in what we're doing, and when they're interested, we can't ignore them. Yeah. So that's my thing. You know what I mean? We will make sure we contact him. Kathy will remind me tomorrow morning. We will make sure that we get that Thank done. You. And then the only other thing that I did was that habitat conservation plan yes. that was very interesting, but kind of a little underwhelming when I asked some questions uh, that I really yeah. wasn't happy with the answer about, because um, how much is that going to cost us? The whole plan? Yeah. City? The city is going to cost us nothing to get a grant. Oh. I see. Okay, then I rest my case. But well, it's still a costume. Right? It was wink, wink. Well, it was interesting. I mean, in the field, when we sell property, like I said to the guy, when I go sell something, I know if there's gophers there, we can tell, we know what it is. And so I was asking him all the specifics and I was tongue in cheek. I'm like, are we going to see you running through the elm with a butterfly net and capturing gophers and studying them and looking? And are we going to see you do something? And he's like, oh, no, no, nothing like that. We won't be around at all. We're just using the best available science. It's just paperwork. So they, they do but have. They're not, on, they're not on the spot here looking at anything. They, have, no, they, have, they have people that come out and observe the areas for these animals. So that does happen. But, if you, but once the process is done, they don't have to come back out. It's done. But they, they just they seem kind of, kind of, you know, like bureaucratic. They seem yeah. that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. I'm trying to be <laughs> diplomatic and nice, but, you know, it was. That was my impression, although it was interesting and I learned a few things. Like okay. when I retire, I can do that because I can look at bald eagles. I mean, day. when I mean, you sell land, you you get people from the county four times in the right season, in the right place, digging around, doing all this stuff like it's an actual study. So I was surprised to hear that they don't actually do that. Hmm. But I just wanted to share that. It was interesting, but not quite what I expected. That's all. Any, any, James, okay. you have to do the mating season. <laughs> um, up here. With, uh, with that used car place coming through, uh, are you all aware of what was in the news a few months back? Was it, weren't they in the news like a couple of years back also? Well, let's, possibly. What the article says, they were not like setting itself. The article yeah. stated that they were caught up in selling vehicles with salvage titles and recovered type, that, that type of stuff. Um, and when I was looking into it, there's no state law that says they can't do that. Mm -hmm. So, but I don't, if we can, to discourage that type of shady used car kind of if nonsense, it happened. Yeah, if it, regardless of whether it happened, just to prevent it from ever happening in the city, sure. that we have an ordinance that any used vehicle must be disclosed if it has a salvage title or a recovered title or something like that. And I don't see why anyone would not want that. In private sale as well? Would there be exclusions? No, no, just commercial. Only you can't commercial. do anything about private sale. I was just making sure. Yeah, I don't know if there's an RCW. There's RCW and supersede it. Um, but we'll ask our attorney. See yeah, well, it seems that there be other RCW. The city is allowed to build upon it. They just can't. Yeah, I don't believe there is already an RCW because if you go into the when before you go to do the um, registration, they have a they have a flyer that says you cannot retitle a salvaged vehicle. Once it's once it's uh, written off as salvage, you cannot retitle it. One way or the other, we will ask our attorney and we will um, get an answer for you. 
whether it's an RCW and if we can take action, make it on a Yale Municipal Code, we will do so. Or we will um, bring it back to you and you can do whatever you want to do. Anything else? Okay. Another reminder, Kathy. Okay. You're good? Thank you. Now. Thank you. Okay. We'll save it for later. All right. Ashley, do you have initiatives? Yeah, my initiative was just from the Yelm Homelessness Task Force, how um, we would like to, the members that we would like to look at the makeup of the task force. Um, as it states, there are certain positions or titles that people should be holding within that group. And um, consider the movement of turning it into a committee instead of just a task force, make it more legit. Do we have any like big issues? We can't ask the chief anymore. With this, has anything changed from last time so we did this? When, yeah. yeah, when did, when I was on it with Molly Carmody, we, um, along with the other task force members, we made a list of recommendations, which task force is task for to do. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's a few recommendations. I think we're doing two of those. We have the uh, community center. And we, we did the um, write-up of all the different um, organizations that provide and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's something else I think we're, we did or we started to do. Um, I think we only, the city only legitimately did two of, of the three. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the conditions. Well, the five, because we only accepted less than five. Yeah, but the conditions. There was in, two that we were tied on. The condition, it was the field. Are they, they, yeah. But is anything the out there different? That's not. Yeah. Increase. Yeah. Yeah. The increased population also. of homelessness, that's different. The numbers are growing, and you can look at that with the pit numbers, the mm -hmm. point in time numbers growing specifically for Yelm. Um, is that a good enough answer? I can keep answering. I, I think this, I mean, I'm it's a good. Uh, uh, he's also on the task force. So, so in regards know. to making it a committee, um, there may have not been full agreement on it, but my understanding when I read it is the task force was created technically, and when you look at the ordinance, or not the uh, resolution. Yep. The task force was simply created to, to put out that report. There's nothing that really says it keeps going on after that. Nothing really says it doesn't either. Correct. I but understand yeah, that. But yeah, yeah, I agree though. It was meant for so the report. From the I, instead of it being called a task force, I think it needs to be, we need to figure out whether yeah. it's a committee or. I, I think it makes sense to make a whatever. committee, but um, we've already chat a little bit of management. We will put this on our study session for, February for an actual discussion on it. You can decide whether or not we do or not. Perfect. Okay, great. Yeah, that was my only initiative. Brian. I have uh, two that uh, I'm going to be working on uh, this year. One of them is with our senior center. Um, I'm going to reach out to talk to the committee that the council that works there and see about trying to, uh, if we can work with uh, utilizing uh, our capability of getting grants and see about maybe upgrading that and making it so that it becomes a bigger, a better place for community instead of just a grass field with a building and see what we can do, uh, what all that the city can do to help them out and make it into a more of a uh, location where community can actually occur. And the fact that, you know, we're coming up on 100 years for the city, I think it'd be a great thing to, if we can get this all put together in a way of showing are uh, more mature citizens, more mature residents of the area that uh, we actually do care about them and want to provide something better. The other thing is uh, that I'll be working on is with the Central Business District, really want to try to see about uh, getting it so that once we get our one ways here, proof of concept, let's really get it. Uh, the fact that like 15, 20 years ago, there was a study and a paper put together this beautiful central business district that we could have, and it's never moved forward. I think it's time that we actually start moving forward on that and start getting uh, with what that plan was put together, if we have to revisit, whatever it may be, but we need to get the community uh, business people are wanting, there's business people out there wanting to have uh, space to be able to open up businesses. and. We need to bring in uh, some other things that work with our central business district, the way that we have it developed, but actually never kick the chalk blocks out to allow it to start developing. 
So that's uh, those are two items that I'll be working on this year. All right. Quick question. Anyone listen to that voicemail regarding the cemetery? I don't think I saw it. Okay. What? Well, don't play it out loud right now, though. Um, I, I thought I had it in queued up. Um, I just because I don't remember the day it was, but there was someone they were wanting to go to the cemetery and it was posted the hours on it, and for whatever reason, it wasn't open. Hmm. I don't remember seeing that. Voicemails translate to emails, correct? It came through. It will go to your email. Yeah. 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 I don't think I saw that. It was probably specific to James. To James. Oh, oh right. Yeah. You're special. Yeah. You're special. Yeah. Um, well, you alphabetically, it, he's us, though, first. It's uh, just forge the name. We'll uh, it's maybe probably like pound it's, one, pound two. You can send it to um, Clay, who's a commissioner, cemetery commissioner. Yeah, I could. Or okay, James, if you wanted as well. But yeah, it's not really the city's. Uh, I didn't know if that was within city limits or not. No, it's not. Oh, this was just sent to me. Yeah. Anything else? Yes. So speaking of emails, we got an email invitation for the parade. What does that look like for a city council person to have a seat in the parade? Um, I don't know if it's actual in the parade parade. It says Lynn, do you want to, I think it meant for like the stadium, but yeah. Oh, Lynn, the, do you want to, okay. Yeah, it's not a seat in the parade, but it's in the stadium. In the stadium being what's Joe D. What? Joe D. Yeah. Joe D at Yelmaw.gov. Anything else? Um, oh, since you asked, I do need your reservations. So if you would like to do anything, please let me know so that I can give them a, a yep. Can I just go like this? Like, what parade? Yes. Uh, football. Football. Yeah, football. Yeah. What date is it? For the tornado it's celebration it's that we spoke of. Monday at four. You're not alumni? And it's a oh. Christmas parade. No. Oh, no. 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 <laughs> I'm sorry, APLs. APLs. It, there's a lot of different variables that went into that. But it, it makes sense, though. I, I agree. No, it doesn't. It. <laughs> it, for the students to I attend, it does. Otherwise, it would be great. They have wrestling. They couldn't make it there. They have what? The kids would have been there. Um, but the the players, yeah. The they would have been there. In the goal? Wrestling. Yeah. 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 I said it three times. Anything else? My only initiative is Christmas lights. No, I'm just kidding. All right, we're done. Ending on a good note. There's my tree lights, Todd. Where's my?